Hello, everyone. I'm with Neha Gupta, and we're du- doing dual Facebook Live broadcasts. Today, we're in our office here in Santa Monica, California, and I'm interviewing Neha on the five biggest misconceptions or biggest mistakes that parents make when helping their kids get into college. And we're doing a bunch of multimedia. Our, we're going to be podcast dominant, and that's why we have these microphones in front of us, because we're about to do a podcast. I'm going to be recording this. We want you to be along for the ride. <clears throat> we're going to be recording this. We've got audio equipment behind us, and we thought this would be really fun for you to watch as well. So we've got some people joining in. Neha's already got 14 million people watching live yes. from collegeshortcuts.com. You, you mean 140 million. Yeah, 140 million. Uh, you have any questions before we get started? <laughs> no, you want to tell anybody anything? We're going to have a good time. <laughs> we uh, a great time. <laughs> we were going to turn on a bunch of facial things that make me look like I'm a cat, but I would be just staring at them way too much. <laughs> Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, so here we go. We're going to have fun. Thanks for joining in with us, those of you that are watching live. Um, all right, here we go. So we're rolling in three seconds. Hello, everyone. This is Josh Oaks, and you're listening to the SmartSocial.com podcast. I have... An absolute expert here today, and we're talking about our topic is one that is of great importance. If you have a middle schooler or a high schooler, our topic today is what are the five biggest misconceptions and or mistakes that parents make when they're helping their kids apply to college? Now, Neha Gupta is in charge of college shortcuts.com. She's the founder and she travels all over the country helping people just like you, parents of kids. And if you if you have your kids in the room and you want them to listen to this as well, go get them. Let's make sure that they are shining on the application. You all know that I teach kids how to shine online. Neha Gupta teaches them how to shine on the application. But everybody thinks that they know a topic. Now, you know, a lot of times people will say, oh, it's okay, my uncle or my aunt got into Harvard, Stanford, Yale, whatever, Berkeley. I'll just ask them when it's time. Or I'm going to change the, we're going to basically 24 hours before we apply, we're going to hide from Google. We're going to hide from the internet. We're going to change things. We're going to come up because somebody's a good writer. Let's throw all those mis- misconceptions out out the window. I've got her in here because a lot of those are wrong. And today I want you to have the best of the best. And I'm excited that she's here. I'm excited that she's in Los Angeles in Santa Monica, California to join us here today. So if you're listening to us on the website, if you're listening on our podcast on smartsocial.com, uh, you can click the links below at any time to learn more about collegeshortcuts.com. Let's talk. Neha, welcome to the podcast first off. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you here. <laughs> Now, first, talk to us about tip number one. Uh, should we start the day before the day the day before we're ready to apply? Is that when we start, or what's the best age for us to start thinking about applying to college? Absolutely. So um, that's one of the biggest mistakes we see over and over. I'm right now in the middle of a season where a lot of students are getting rejected, yeah. and so I'm getting calls from parents every single day that have said wow, I've listened to your stuff, I've watched your stuff, but I never ended up reaching out to you, and now my kid didn't get in, or we picked all the wrong schools, and we thought they'd get in, and they didn't. Um, So to me, I think the problem is we're all starting way too late in the process, and really the best time, if you could do it in like this picture-perfect world, it would be starting in eighth grade, before they even touch foot in a high school. Because, for example, if you want to buy a house, You wouldn't just buy a house tomorrow. It's something you decide and you look at and you make decisions on, and it takes time to make sure you have everything, all your ducks in a row. The same investment can be made even in a college in your child's education. So starting early is the best way when it comes to the college admissions process. I love it. And so that's 14 years old, eighth grade. Yes. Around that. Yeah. And that's middle school, the end of junior high. And I'll tell you why that's important, because a lot of people are like, that's too early, Neha, I don't get it. The issue is, is when your child is deciding on the next stage, which is the next high school, um, or if they're deciding on what types of classes they take, most high schools have two tracks. They'll have, okay, these are the classes your kid's going to take and the regular classes, or they have the kids that go into honors and AP classes. Well, if you're already starting at regular, it's going to be hard for you to jump into honors and AP to get that extra point in the GPA. I know I'm getting a little technical, but... The thing about it is, if you don't start arguing as a parent at eighth grade with the schools to say, wait, I think my kid could do honors, or wait, I think we can do this, your kid can't get that extra leg up. That's why I say start early. Okay, start early, eighth grade, and 
I know that we agree on this. It, I would argue that you start talking with your kids about college eight, eight years old, right? Totally. And the reason why we say eight is because you're, if they get on Instagram or Snapchat at an early age, we want them to behave positively online so when a college Googles them, that they are seen in a positive light because the more we talk about their dream school, the less of a surprise it is in eighth grade when they start applying and getting into the right classes. And next, the more they will behave well online. It's a really big deal. We we believe at a younger age. So that's why we're tied at the hip on shining online and shining on that application. Yeah. I mean, I would say, you know, we just joined Instagram, which is kind of funny. I know I'm a little behind. I'm, I'm much more of a Facebook queen, but it floors me. The stuff I see on Instagram, I mean, that's awesome. That is not appropriate stuff. So yeah. I think what you're doing is really important because people don't realize this stuff is sticking. I mean, right now, Facebook is under a lot of heat. There's so much privacy, so much stuff that's open, and people think, oh, I'm just going to change the privacy settings. Well, don't think these colleges don't have a way of searching to find out the type of information to make sure students are safe to bring to their campus. Yeah, I mean, four years ago, we had a lot of people saying, I'm going to change my Facebook username and my name. And even back then, we did not know how to tell them we're going to find you. <laughs> and now it's super easy. Like if you're thinking oh, those yeah. things, like I've got a, one, a pill to fix this, or I've got a technique, or ha, 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 I'll show them. They're, they do this every day. They're going to find you. Mm-hmm. So not to scare you, but so tip one, Neha Gupta, where you're listening live, collegeshortcuts.com. And uh, her tip one was start early eighth grade when parents should be start talking about dream schools and the classes you should take to get ready. Step step two, Neha, what is tip two? It's about really thinking strategically to build a portfolio uh, and help them in building their resume. So one of the biggest mistakes we see over and over is people try to stuff the resume. And it's not about just stuffing the resume with a lot of activities. It's about finding a few things that they're actually passionate about and going deep into those things. For example, with me, I was really passionate about hip hop dance and Indian dance combined. I was a painter, so you'd always see like a paintbrush in my hair when I was in high school. And I was involved with the Uh, political scene in terms of diversity, and I was interested in being on the museum board for children. So those were kind of my main focuses that made me really different from my profile. And I think that's the big thing is people are joining things like, I'm going to join Spanish club and English club, and I'm never going to attend. I'm never going to be a leader. No one cares then. No one wants people that are just members that aren't even participating. It's just not interesting. You can't gamify it and get all these things and look amazing. Yeah. Okay, so building out a portfolio or resume, which we couldn't believe we couldn't believe in more at smartsocial.com. We believe that that resume, that portfolio, that dialogue about how you shine online happens at a very, very young age. I love that you brought that up. Tip three. Um, I want you to talk to us about what does tip three mean? When we, What is our unique angle and how do we find that? So the unique angle to me is one of the most... Let me start from the beginning. I shouldn't have said it. Tip three, start from the beginning. Tip three is take time to create that unique angle that makes us unique. What does that mean? So the big thing about the unique angle is, um, so for all podcast listeners, I'm South Asian and I'm Indian, right? So if you have an Indian female applying to college that wants to go into medicine, well, there's like hundreds of thousands of us. So what is going to be your unique angle that helps you to get in or makes you different than the other student in your school, in your city, in your state, in your country, or in the world? Mm -hmm. Which sounds crazy, but it's true. That's what you're competing with right now. So true. And you have to be realistic about it. So the unique angle, sometimes this is where parents really fumble because they think that what they're getting their kids into makes them unique. But one of the biggest parts about creating a unique angle is looking at the child from a third-party perspective and then looking at them and saying, okay, how do we formulate these essays really well that really showcase them to say, hey, this is what I want to get into or this is what I've done and this is why you should take me in Mm -hmm. to your university. So the unique angle sometimes can be really challenging because the parent's too close to to the kit, right? So they're in day in and day out. This is where I really feel like sometimes getting someone uh, to look at that is important, but a unique angle, for example, would be um, a South Asian female uh, applying to medicine, but is also super passionate about um, gastronomic cooking and takes online Ivy League courses about it. 
Cool. That's yeah. really random. Something right? super Or like, unique, you know, yeah. Josh likes to fly planes or something. Yeah. Yeah. But he likes to shine online. That's really random, but it's yeah. cool, right? It creates this kind of unique edge to the person. It's like, oh, they're not just all one thing. Uh, they're, they've are they got different aspects to them. And it has to be highlighted in a very certain way in the application. I love it. That's great. Okay, so tip one is start early. Tip two, build out your portfolio. Tip three, take time to create that unique angle. And uh, tip number four, what do we need to know? So this is the one that everyone hates. But the truth is you have to have solid grades and solid test scores. Okay. Um, I went to Rice University. I still studied till 2 a.m. almost every night. And I was an all-honors AP, spoke at my graduation, total nerd. Wow. In college. In college, I still had to study hard. Yeah, yeah. It's not over. Because everyone else was a valedictorian. Yeah. So, big thing is you've got to have solid grades and solid test scores. If you're choosing to go to these types of universities, you have to be ready to have solid work ethic and motivation. The only way to show that is through your grades and and test scores in high school. Otherwise, your kid's going to flunk out. Yeah. That's the biggest problem we're seeing over and over. Let me just get my kid in. Yeah. But that's not it. How do we get our kids to stay in? Yeah, exactly. And it's so true. So, let's break that down early on. Would you think it's good to have teach kids behavioral ways to manage the homework, to manage Absolutely. their time, to manage their assignments? Absolutely. It's I didn't like, have much of that, and I, I, I mean, realized later on, oh, my gosh, there's missing I mean, assignments. Totally. Also, just think about time management in your life as an adult. Yeah, it's a lot. Right? Like, yeah. if you would have those skills early on. Yeah. The minute your child steps foot on high school, they are being tracked on that campus. Every grade, every homework, mm-hmm. every test good. score, okay, that every quiz... But yeah, they're being Every book report. They're, they're, yeah, exactly. They're everything being has been calculated to that GPA. Uh, I used to calculate to my tenth of the GPA decimal point. Wow. So, uh, yeah, total nerd in the house. But wow. yes, it's about really making sure you understand, um, you know, that you really, I, I believe the only competition we have is ourselves. I'm learning that right now in a few different parts of my life. I truly mm-hmm. believe that as a child, if you can learn this early on, that it's, it's, it's a choice to yeah. be driven. It's a choice to be motivated. It's a choice to get good grades. And it's a choice to set your own goals to say, I want to go to this great school. And that's something that all of you watching live on Facebook, and especially those of you in the podcast right now, talk with your kids early, often, and let them set some of those objectives. Totally. For instance, hey, where do you want it? Rather than, hey, don't be on Snapchat. Hey, that's going to live forever online. Hey, hey, kid, where do you want to go to school? You want to go to UCLA? Yale, Princeton, Harvard, or the best of the best, USC. I mean, come on now. <laughs> um, and to pick, uh, let your kid pick some schools. Totally. Hey, you want to play football? You want to do that? Great. How are we going to, let's talk about the football coach. What are they going to find? What are they going to do? Get that kid thinking early on so you're not telling them what not to do and stuff and what to do, but rather they're intrinsically setting that bar high. Right? So that we can uh, to get that. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you, it was uh, just a quick story. I was working with a student out of North Carolina. We work with students globally um, through video and, and all sorts of ways. This student had a Duke poster on her wall. And it was funny. We were video Skyping, and in the background was always this Duke poster. Yeah. She'd had it there since sixth grade. That's awesome. Visualizing every day. Every day she woke up, every decision she made was about how do I get into this school or how do I further my education or how do I need to act in order to really do this. Yeah. She got into Duke after working with me. Amazing. And I told her, I was like, look, we're just going to package you really well. She had an incredible internship with the FDA, which mm-hmm. is unheard of at uh, her age category. And she was super passionate, super driven. But because she had that poster to visualize, I'm a big visualizing type of person. I love to create vision boards. She literally envisioned Duke and it happened. That's awesome. And I truly believe, yeah, you should pick some schools early on. I think you pick schools early on. And every time you see that poster, you're like, oh, probably shouldn't post that photo on Snapchat. Yeah, yeah. And then what am I, why am I ditching my homework assignment to do something else, which is cool. Totally. Now, the coolest part about this office is that they build airplanes next door. The only bad part about this office is they're literally building an airplane next door. If you hear stuff in the background, people are actually completing a wing, a left wing on an aircraft. It's awesome. It'll fly 300 miles an hour. And we'll put all the kids on it to fly into their dreams. Exactly. That was cheesy and amazing. All right. So, all right, everybody listening and watching, step one, starting early. Step two, building out that portfolio resume. Step three, it takes, uh, what does it take to create a unique angle that makes us unique? Don't just be like everybody else. 
And then uh, step four was the thing we all hate to hear, and I grunted at in the beginning when, before we were talking, you have to have solid grades and test scores. It's not great, but that takes a lot of work. And then what is step five? Step five is getting outside help. I think one of the biggest things that I was thinking about this morning was, why do people work with people like us? It's our energy. That's what people actually buy. They love the fact that we're a mentor, kids listen to us. Yeah. I think that's really important. You know, getting an outside consultant or getting an educational consultant, a tutor, a test prep coach, a college consultant, these are all ways to help. I was actually on a podcast last night with someone from Singapore, and I was talking about how in Asian cultures, the concept of a tribe is very important. Yeah. It's not just mommy and daddy managing this child or uh, parents and partners. It's really about like, okay, there's teachers, there's counselors, there's consultants. It's a lot to take to raise a kid, but then... How do we find someone that has a few steps ahead or has what your kid wants and puts them in that proximity because proximity yeah. is power. Yeah. So we call that um, being an ambassador. Sometimes the kids don't yes. want a kid. I mean, in America, kids often, if they hit 14 years old. They don't want to listen to the parents. I like, still don't want to listen to my parents. But if you have that cool <laughs> uncle, that cool aunt, an ambassador, somebody that your kid looks up to, that mm -hmm. person could say the same thing and it's very different. And that's what called, totally. I, I'm not getting paid. Everybody on the, what? I have never gotten paid by her company. I don't own shares in it, but they you would hire collegeshortcuts.com or smartsocial.com because there's a cool outsider that's a trusted outsider that will give you wise advice. They see things differently, and they'll talk to your kid in a way that's a little bit cool um, or will suck less. You know, Teenagers say that to me all the time. Mom, his speech didn't suck. And moms go, hey, he really likes you because <laughs> he said that, right? And that's what teenagers think. And, and that's what you have to figure out in your family, in your home, who is going to be able to speak to your kid in a way that resonates with them, that mm -hmm. motivates them, intrinsic motivation, and, and that's really, really crucial. So, Especially if we all have the same goal. I think that's the big thing. A lot of parents try to do this all on their own, Yeah. and it's a really hard path. Yeah. At some point, the child starts to build these needs for independence, and they will literally just ignore everything you say. Yeah. Um, I did it. There's no doubt about it. And I was, a, you know, I was at the top of my class. I still was ignoring my parents. I made my parents' lives not that easy. Yeah. Um, I had a strong personality. I still do. Yes, you do. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, I Which totally agree. Getting an outside good. consultant can totally change the game for your kid. Yeah. I mean, when you need something very, very targeted, it's a, it's a company. If you need, if you just have some issues that you want to go through, it could be an aunt or an uncle. I mean, right. and, but what you don't want to do and... I say this as an outsider. You don't want to do is say, and I hear this in my, I hear this in my business all the time. I have an aunt that got into Harvard, and she's terrific, and she's she's forty five, fifty. She's fantastic. She's just gonna. She's a pretty good writer. She works at this company. She'll get us into Harvard because she knows how to do it. I'll let you comment on that. I mean, I just want to know when she applied. How many schools did she apply to? What were her scores? Would she get in now? Yeah. Did yeah. she did she handwrite her applications? Yeah, yeah, it's true. And nothing against yes. people that applied to Harvard, Yale, Stanford, or anywhere else twenty years ago. But what was her major? What she tried to get into was it impacted? You know, I'm I'm no expert on this, but I will tell you that if you think that someone in your family is going to do that because they got into a hard one, I, I we hear and I know your industry enough to be dangerous. We hear failure all the time. Like I wish I had at least looked into it early in life. And that's really the key takeaway here today uh, that we're pulling out of here. Everybody listening on the podcast, start early. Yes. That's our number one tip. Start early. Make those mistakes very early on, whether it's online, something silly on Snapchat, or whether it's, I don't know what college I want to go to. This is stupid. Okay, but you're, the next year, if you started in sixth grade, by, by eighth grade, they're going to go, you know, this is kind of important. My friends find it cool to talk about colleges. Now I find it cool because I want to be like my friends. I'm going to set my old, own goals, right? Right. Whatever that is. But the biggest key takeaway I've found is start early, and then the rest, your kid will start to make those mistakes that lead into success. Right. Hopefully. Am I wrong? Totally. Absolutely. I think, I think it's very important to start early. I think it's the number one. I mean, it breaks my heart every day that I get a call. Uh, we get a voicemail from a mom that says, you know, my, I, we don't know what to do. Our kid might have to take a gap year at this point. I'm going to yeah. have to fund that. Yeah. And to me, it's like, wow, I wish I, I try to push so hard to say, 
please at least have a conversation with us. We, we give a free 15-minute consultation away. Yeah. Let's at least have a chat. If it's not with us, it's maybe with someone else, but at least you've taken the action step yeah. for your child. Yeah, if you're just joining us right now, we're live on a bunch of different streams, and we're talking about the five misconceptions parents have when applying for helping their kids apply to college. And I've got Neha Gupta here, who's with collegeshortcuts.com, all of you watching live. And uh, we've gone through the five tips. I'm going to repeat them here right now. Starting early, as early as eighth grade or earlier, uh, building out a portfolio or resume. Neha talked to us about how it takes time to create a unique angle that makes you unique. Don't think that you're just going to do the exact same thing that everybody else is doing. You're competing worldwide, nationwide, citywide. Get solid grades and test scores, and that's why you need to start really early, yes. um, really, really early. And then um, get outside help, whether it's a college consultant or an aunt or an uncle or somebody, but don't just rely on them. to. They're a great writer. They'll help you do that. I know we did that, and I, you know, I didn't get into the school that I – I'm oh, glad I'm I didn't. Sorry, I wasn't no. there. It's okay. USC let me in, and that's all that matters. <laughs> God has a plan, right? That's right. Oh, UCLA man. said no, and I'm not. Yeah, and uh, I'm really glad because uh, I knew I learned I was a Trojan, anyways. So, uh, anyways, no, n I don't play favorites, but if I did, you just learned my favorite. So. Okay, one more thing. I want to have a talk with everybody listening right now. There is a dream school for your child. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, some of us went to junior college because we couldn't afford four years, and that's fine. I went to junior college for three years and got that amazing, got that chance to go in. But what's most important, in addition, is that you go, and I'm going to speak for me just for a sec. Do you mind? Go for it. Go Google your kids today. I want to tell you two ways to Google your kids that nobody's doing. Not enough of Americans do this, and they are shocked when... They're shocked when they find out they didn't get the internship, they didn't get into college, they didn't get the job, and they don't know why. One, Google your kids with their first and last name a couple different ways. If your kid's name is Michael, Google them as Mike Smith and Michael Smith. And then if you find all kinds of other people and you say, oh, those people were arrested, but they don't look anything like Mike because Mike is brunette and they're blonde, your child is that a person that was arrested until proven otherwise. Your child is that person because they're going to go, whoa, there's a lot of arrested pictures and this kid's 23 um and then a lot of moms will say no no no, my kid isn't 18 no that doesn't look like my kid well it is until proven otherwise and that's why you have to start building tip two build a portfolio or resume early and often go google your kids find out who else is creating google results i'm looking at your face going ah in a lot of my speeches parents say no it's fine but then they hear back later and harvard's been doing this they've been saying to people afterward we didn't let you in for these reasons, but your grandfather went here, and we have to be honest with you. People come up at the end of my speeches and say, you wouldn't believe it, but they told us why, and we wish we would have done it differently. So yeah. please go search online, see what your kids are doing, have a dialogue with them, and second, go search for your kid's name in quotes as well. Yes. Because I was going to say that. <laughs> when you search for your kid's name, Josh Oaks, without quotes, it can find it the keywords in any order anywhere on the page, but when you do it in quotes, it's Josh uh, plus a space plus the word Oaks is what Google will find. Yes. And it will then define Josh Oaks's for the most part, that key phrase at the top of the page or the bottom of the page, and it's going to start to hone in on the job. Now, if there's a celebrity involved in that name, then you can put your city name or your school name after it and start to hone He in. is a celebrity, guys. No, no, stop it. <laughs> I mean, I guess here's my question to you, too. I yeah. mean, wouldn't it be great, and it, I'm sure you talk about this, but, like, for them to create YouTube videos or to create yeah. that online portfolio, because then you'll be... Totally above the arrested kid. So we did this for a, a family friend, uh, a client, a, a corporate client, because we all the tips that we share with students are for big companies that work really well and they work just as well for kids. And we actually helped her to create three YouTube videos. She is Caucasian and Jewish and has red hair. And I said, "What are you good at? Your dad wants you to learn marketing. That's why I sent you in here to intern. You go to high school." She said, "Well, I can read, write, and speak Mandarin." And I said, what? She goes, yeah, I've traveled the world. I got that great opportunity to do this. I said, your Google results are terrible. They don't tell that story. So we set her up over there. It's hard to see, but there was actually a whiteboard behind Neha. And we actually had her teach. Uh, and I, I had her use her phone. And I said, you're going to use your phone to teach where is, what are your three phrases? And she, where's the hotel? Where's the restaurant? Where's the bathroom? And she, so she wrote it out in Mandarin, wrote it out in English, and showed the big symbols and showed why it's important in 60 seconds or less each video. Now, when you Google her, the parents listen up because 
if there's somebody else that's being arrested on your kid's Google results and it's at all confusing, um, we were able to fix this for her. And now when you search for her, you get three awesome videos. Yes. And it's serious. And now she's in Shanghai studying at NYU Shanghai as a sophomore now. I don't take full credit, but I tell her dad I do because we're friends. <laughs> but you get the idea. It changed her. Her Google results went from a listing of other people to her portfolio. Yes. And it's awesome. And she's she got discovered not only applying in her application as a Caucasian person of diversity that speaks, reads, and writes Mandarin really well, but also she, her Google results show it. I'm teaching people how to speak Mandarin. Absolutely. It's a major reason why we built the family plan, where we can help them build these portfolios oh. early on. I think that's the biggest issue, is that parents want to know what to do, but a lot of times they don't know what to do. Yeah. And I think that's amazing. Yeah. Now, you have a book out. We're going to link to it below. They go to collegeshortcuts.com. To yeah, you can get book. a free copy on our site. A free copy? Free I book. Love it. I love it. And I, ha I handwrite each one with a love neha on it. Do you really? I'm oh, cheesy like take, that. That's amazing. You know, I'm cheesy. I love it. Well, I love your enthusiasm. It's really great. Those of you that are listening right now, you can learn more at collegeshortcuts.com. I'm Josh Oaks with smartsocial.com, teaching your kids how to shine online. Please understand that it's not over when you're in college. you got to study hard, and then you also got to get that internship. It's not over when you get that internship. you got to get that great job. And a lot of students go, oh, I'm fine. I just got accepted. I'm a senior in college. I can mess around now. But there's a lot to lose. It is not over. It, 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 the, it's not over on the wedding day. You know, there's still a marriage you have to have, right? <laughs> the, the, the wedding day is not the crossing of the finish line. Uh, somebody joked about me with that when I worked at Disney at a young age. And I went, what does that mean? And now I get it. I mean, there is, it is a marathon, not a sprint. Yes. Right? Always be in it for the long haul. I'm always in it for the long haul. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Talk to people about being light, bright, and polite and make sure that you understand that everything you put privately will end up online. Let's get your kid discovered doing stuff that they want to get discovered by their dream school. Neha, I'll, go, I'll give you the last word. So um, I'm so excited to be here. It's so much fun to interview with you because it's like we just have the same level of energy and I think it's so much fun. Um, I just hope that every parent that's listening takes a moment uh, to take action for their child. I think every child deserves it. I think we're living in a world of a lot of uncertainty when it comes to our children. And I think having the mentorship, the right people around to help these children navigate through the stress and anxiety can completely change the trajectory of their life. So I love that. Yeah. Start early, my friends. Everybody watching us on Facebook Live, it's great to see you. Uh, you can click some of the links below. Neha's going to have that. And everybody that's listening live on our podcast, it's great to have you here. Uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Have a great day. All right. All right. How'd you guys do? Woo! <laughs> oh, a bunch okay. of people joined in. I think now we have to do the funny faces because I've been waiting the whole time. All right. Let's do that. Sorry, Here, let me turn it on. Let me, let me do it. a quick audio test. Let me just test. <laughs> if you guys are on Facebook, it sounds good. Yeah, it sounds good. It sounds really good. On his Instagram, we're going to do these funny All right, noises. so we're going to do, uh, <laughs> do this fun thing. Let me turn off the recorder. Hey, everyone on my Facebook Live, say hi. If you're watching, comment can, below. Can we do, can we do the uh Can we do the after Facebook? it's live? Yeah, click that one. Let's see if that works. Ooh. Oh, yes. <laughs> that is what I'm talking about. You Look, when you're Coming applying. Coming at you from underwater. When you're applying for college, <laughs> you do not need to be boring. All right, the college catches me doing this. Are they going? Oh yeah, this is fantastic. Oh my god. Um, hold on. Is this is this live on, on no, this Facebook? Is, this is Facebook Live, but you can't do the. Oh, you can only do it. Yeah, okay. I don't think so, you can. All right, because no. you hung out with us for so long. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh yes. <laughs> Insta. Good day. All right, let's see if this one goes. Oh. That's, yeah, my no. nephew's not going to like no, that. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. Look at my teeth. Ooh. That's, this is amazing. You guys have to watch this this on technology Instagram. is absolutely incredible. I know, can you believe the facial record? Wait, who's that? Is that you? That's me. That's creepy. All right, <laughs> just put your head right there. Wait, where? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it doesn't want to catch me. All right. It's just you, baby. Oh. Is that black and oh, white? I like the black and white. That's quite nice. All right. Oh, wow. It's like so 80s. Oh my gosh, there's a fish on your face. Switch to camera <laughs> view. Oh, the other camera view. All right, this is incredible. Ooh, Let's go wait. back here. Um, is there anything else we want to share with people? 
This is pretty amazing, actually. I'm sorry, I really fast. love this. It's like, we should get some jazz music going. <laughs> oh my, like, wait. All right. Let's get some music going. <laughs> this is fun. All right, thanks everybody for watching. We won't, I won't, uh, have you be here anymore, but I appreciate your time. Neha, thank you so much. <laughs> thanks. Bye everybody, take care. All right, bye everyone on my Facebook Live. Great to see you guys. Please comment below if you have any questions. Would love to answer them. And send us a message. All right, bye. Soon. Bye.